Well, hello and welcome once again to Doc Onco Physics. Keith Onco here. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is looking at another uh, rotational equilibrium um, example. Uh, and mainly we're going to be looking at the effects of torque on rotational equilibrium. So what we have in front of us is we have a thing called a boom. And the boom is uh, this thing right here. Right? That's our boom. And um, it is held in place by this cable right here. And the tension in that cable is said to be 720 newtons. Okay? The boom itself, or, and the boom can be anything. It can be a, um, a, a board, a wood, it uh, can be metal, it can be anything. It's just called a boom. Um, the boom is at a 60 degree angle down here. And we would like to know what the weight of the boom is. Okay? So what are the forces and torques that we have on our boom? Well, first of all, we know that we have this 720 Newton force on it, which is creating a torque on our boom. Um, we also have the weight of the boom itself, right? which is what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out just what that, what that weight is. Well, where does the weight or the force due to gravity act for any object? Well, our boom is of uniform density. And so the weight of that acts at the center of mass, which would be right about there. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line down here. All right? And so this is the weight of the boom, which is also its force due to gravity. All right. So we need to know a couple things. So first, What's going to cause our boom to go in a clockwise direction? Well, the thing that would cause it to go in a clockwise direction, say if this cable up here broke or wasn't there, this would go in a clockwise direction due to the weight of the boom itself. Okay? But it is sitting there stationary. It's static. And so it's not moving. What's causing it to go in a counterclockwise direction? Well, it would be the tension in that cable right there. All right, so we're missing a couple of other pieces of information. One is um, what, how far from our pivot point, which is right down there, is this cable attached to the boom? Well, it is attached at 3 quarters of the length of the boom itself. All right, so it's 3 quarters L, if you will. And where is the force due to gravity or the weight of the boom? Where does that have an effect? Well, that has an effect at 0.5L. Okay, so that would be the distance from the pivot point. Why is it 0.5? Because it's at the halfway point of the boom. Since uh, the boom is of length L, the halfway point would be 0.5L. Okay, it should be a 0.5 there. It's not a very good looking point, but this is 0.5. L right here. All right, so now we have all of our forces, right? Uh, we have our distances. We know that this force here, all right, is at a 90 degree angle to the boom. However, our weight, our force due to gravity, is not at 90 degrees to the boom, all right? Since we know that this is 60 degrees down here in this corner, and this is a right triangle right here, we know that this is 30 degrees up here since this is a triangle. Right? So now we have pretty much all of the pieces of information that we're going to need to solve this uh, rotational equilibrium or statics problem. Let's go with the counterclockwise direction information first. Well, we, have, we need to understand that the sum of the torques in the clockwise direction is going to need to this, uh, equal the sum of the torques in the counterclockwise direction in order for us to have this rotational equilibrium or static situation. So what do we have? Let's find the clockwise uh, torques first. So we have the 720 newtons all right, in the cable. It is three quarter, I'm sorry, yes, three quarters of the way or 0.75 L away from the pivot point or the center of rotation. All right? And we're at 90 degrees up here, all right? So the sine of 90 degrees is just one, all right? And that is our only torque 
in the um, counterclockwise direction. So this would be counterclockwise. Okay. So this is going to have to equal the torques, all of the torques, in the clockwise direction. Well, we also only happen to have one torque in the clockwise direction, and that's the torque due to the weight of the beam itself. Well, what's the weight of the beam? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. So we're just going to call that the force of the beam itself, all right, the gravitational force of the beam. Where is that acting? Well, it's acting at 0.5L from the pivot point or the center of rotation. And is the angle 90 degrees? Well, no, it isn't. It's 30 degrees. So we're going to have to multiply this times the sine of 30. Okay. So if we uh, do a little arithmetic here, let's see what we get. The value of 720 times 0.75 is 540 Newton meters. And this is going to equal uh, FB times 0.5L times the sine of 30 degrees, 30 degrees, which is also 0.5. So this is going to be times 0.25L. Okay, so 0.5 times 0.5 is 0.25. Uh, notice, if you will, whoops, uh -huh, I forgot one thing out here. Uh, I forgot to put in our value of L on the left-hand side, right? Remember, this is 720 newtons times 0.75L. I apologize for that. So we have an L over here, and we have an L over here. What's going to happen to those is we get to cancel those out. So the fact that we didn't know the length of the boom really doesn't make any difference in the long run. So 540 newton meters is equal to FB, right, the weight of the boom, times 0.25. So now if we divide each side by 0.25, what we should get is a weight of the boom equal to 2,160 newtons. If we wanted the mass, right, we could just divide that by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, and we could get the mass. All right, so this is how we, f we solve a statics problem um, in rotational equilibrium. Again, we're using torques. We look for all the torques in the clockwise direction. Here we only had one. All the torques in the counterclockwise direction, we also only had one. We set the counterclockwise torques equal to the clockwise torques, right? and we solve. Okay. So I hope that helps, and I hope you have a great day.